Hey everybody, it's Colin. I'm here to show you how to edit in RAW in Photoshop. As you can see, Photoshop is right here. Um, RAW images are .NEF. When you open them, it'll just open this window. I just did this so you could see behind it. I'm going to make it bigger so that it's a bit easier to see. Okay, so as you can see, I have a image right here. Uh, I, I don't know, I took this in Hawaii like it, over a year ago. So, so this is what the editor looks like. It doesn't look like much, but it actually does a lot more than you think. Um, I would try to stay away from doing like auto stuff like that. That just changes the tint of this. I would just do this manually. Um, I'm just gonna make this photo look beautiful. So here I go. So at first, this is the white balance. I'm changing the white balance to make it look a bit more natural instead of that original bluish tone. Um, now down here, I would definitely stay away from using auto. Sometimes it works kind of cool, but for this situation, I'm not going to. Um, so what I like to do is kind of boost the highlights and maybe boost the shadows a bit, but then turn the exposure down for this kind of setting. As you can see, it looks pretty nice after you do that. Um, the whites and blacks, I don't mess with that much, but in this photo, just to get that horizon line right here out of the way, I'm going to do it. Um, and for the blacks, yeah, I'm just going to leave that as the same thing. Um, the clarity, you don't have to really mess with this unless it's a really soft image already. This image will, yeah, it looks horrible with clarity either way, so definitely leaving that at zero. Vibrance changes, you know, makes it more vibrant, obviously, and saturation just saturates and makes the colors deeper. Um, now I'm going to go to my curves. I will go to the point curve and just make a s very slight curve because, you know, overdoing it can look horrible. Now that I am done with that, um, I go to the, there's a sharpening and noise reduction. Usually I turn the sharpening down because that can actually make the effect in the end look a bit grainy sometimes. Um, I don't know why, but it just does. And uh, luminance, that I only turn that on if I can like visually see the grain clearly, even before exporting. Um, this setting, this is all sorts of stuff with the hue. Um, I guess the one that'll show the most is the yellows. I can change just the yellows to different sh uh, shifts of colors. But I'm going to keep all this at zero. Um, the saturation, you know, it's exactly what it seems like, just shifting certain color saturations. And luminance just changes, changes the brightness of each color and kind of doesn't work that well for many photos. So I'd stay away from using luminance whenever possible. Here is where you can do different, you can select if you want um, what colors you want in the highlights and shadows. Here I'm going to use a bit more of a yellow for the highlights and then just to make it a bit, you know, balanced, I'm going to add a blue to the shadows, and as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Um, I mean, you can mess around with that as long as you want. It In the end, it usually, most of the time, looks great as long as you choose colors that pop together. Um, in the lens corrections, this is pretty cool. If you use a lens that it recognizes, you can enable it so that it'll correct the distortion of the lens. And that just changes it a bit. It gets rid of some of that natural vignetting. As you can see, it's darker around the edges um, right now, and when I turn it on, it kind of gets rid of that. Um, I usually, I like to turn that on, just because then it gives you a better vignette if you want to actually add one. Now here, this is the best vignette tool I have ever seen. It's very, very controllable. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, I mean, I'm just going to start off with a pretty big vignette here, but then you can change it the feathering so it looks a lot better around the edges. Um, you can make it so that some of the highlights kind of stay in there. Um, I think that looks pretty good around the edges. And these settings, uh, the last three ones, the camera calibration, presets, and snapshots, I never go to. I don't really know what those last two are for, but 
Now that you're done with the basic editing, I would just go right back to the first one and kind of retouch some of the stuff that you did before. Probably bring the whites down a bit just to make it better to see. Um, probably keep the shadows and highlights the same. Um, so now after you're done with that, after you're happy with your image, you want to just open it and it will open it back in Photoshop. And you might ask, why would you want to open it in regular Photoshop? Well, that's because there are some tools that you can use after that actually work very well. Um, one's right here. You can hold down or click and hold, and it'll show the Dodge tool, Burn tool, and Sponge. I only use the Dodge and Burn. Um, so this kind of works just like a brush tool. As you can see, it's kind of small right now, so I'm going to make it a lot bigger, um, somewhere in the thousands or so, you know. Uh, actually, that's a bit too big. Bring it down to about 800. Um, so this, I mean, I want, just for this image, just to show it, I'm just going to pop this rock and the shadow underneath it. Um, what you do is you just pretty much drag it and then let go of your mouse and drag some more and it'll just pop that area and make it look pretty cool and then just to get a good contrast around with the area around it once again you know you go to your burn tool make your brush a bit bigger and everything around it you can kinda of make a bit darker I'm gonna make the rocks around it darker especially um, and that kinda of brings a cool little pop to the area that you wanna focus on the most Another thing I like to do, just sometimes, it doesn't always work, but you can actually get a good lens flare going. Now, to get an exact lens flare, you want to go to Window and Info. Um, make sure that your mouse is selected. Um, and, you know, wherever you want a lens flare, I'm just going to show an example. So right here, say you wanted one right in the corner. As you can see in that info pane right here, you'll see some an X and Y coordinate. What you want to do is just um, pretty much just write those down. Um, I, I'm not going to just for the sake of the tutorial, but write those down and it will then, you can go to filter, render, and lens flare. And make sure that you're selected on your background layer or else it'll go to whatever layer, whatever other layers you have. Um, I usually tend to do the 105 millimeter prime just because that looks very natural and good with whatever. And when you're here, I mean, you can drag it here, but it's not at all accurate. What I would do is hold Alt um, and click. And on a Mac, it's Alt or Option and click. Um, and this will show up. You just write down whatever you wrote down for this in here and it'll pinpoint it exactly to where you had it. Um, I'm just gonna put it up here and I don't think it needs to be that much brighter so I'm just gonna do 125 okay and as you can see it kind of creates a cool little gloomy effect and I really like the output of this image um, well uh, that's pretty much it for the raw editor and just editing photos in Photoshop in general. If you don't have the plugin, like sometimes it just uh, doesn't show up after you download it, you can just download it from their website. It's free. It's, you know, a easy to download plugin. Uh, if you are having trouble installing it, just look it up on YouTube how to install it and you'll find something pretty easily. So there you have it. That is how to use the raw Photoshop plugin. It's easy to use once you get used to it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye.